Italy is planning to build the world's longest suspension bridge, connecting the island of Sicily to the Italian mainland. Once completed, it would dramatically cut down travel times in and out of the island, and better connect it to the rest of the country. However, there's one huge and glaring problem. This region of Italy isn't exactly the best place to create such a massive bridge. With hurricane-like winds, an active fault line, and even the possible influence of the Italian mafia, it's gonna be quite difficult to pull this mega project off. So how exactly is Italy planning on doing it? Hi, I'm Regis, and today we're taking a deep dive into the controversial Strait of Messina Bridge. This is the island of Sicily, home to around 5 million people. It's the single largest and most populated island in the entire Mediterranean. And with notable industries such as agriculture, wine, fishing, and tourism, bringing in as much as 5% of Italy's entire GDP, the island is without a doubt an integral part of the country. But despite all of this, travel between Sicily and the mainland isn't exactly as straightforward as you might think. You see, even though the Strait of Messina is only a little over three kilometers at its narrowest point, there aren't any bridges or tunnels that directly connect either side. If you want to go to Sicily from Italy's Calabria region, you'd have to ride a ferry that takes around 30 to 40 minutes to cross the water. And that's assuming that there aren't any delays. This lack of such a vital connection to the mainland has led the island to become somewhat isolated from the rest of the country and Europe's interconnected highway system. To put this into perspective, you could theoretically drive from the mainland's southmost point all the way to London uninterrupted. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could even drive up further until Great Britain's northernmost point. And though that might be a crazy example, it just goes to show how absurd this gap really is. So knowing the potential economic, social, and logistical benefits of such a connection to Sicily, why has there never been a bridge or tunnel built to cross the gap? Well, actually, there have been plenty of plans to do so in the past. And interestingly, the oldest one was actually built. This bridge dates all the way back to ancient Rome in 252 BC and was put together by the Roman consul Metellus. According to historical records, the bridge was made using floating barrels and pieces of wood. It was even used to transport more than 100 war elephants across the strait. Since then, there have been plenty more ideas brought up to build a bridge to Sicily, but none have ever gotten further than becoming a passing idea or a very rough plan. In 1969, an international design competition was arranged by the Italian government, but to no avail. Some crazier proposals even called for the construction of an underwater tunnel, similar to how the Channel Tunnel connects Great Britain to the European mainland. Although this too was never really feasible, given the strong currents and the depth of the Strait of Messina, which can reach up to 250 meters at its deepest point. The tunnel idea was ultimately scrapped, and none of the other proposals turned out to be realistic and attainable. However, this all changed in 1981, when the Messina Strait Company was established by the Italian government to design, build, and maintain a future bridge across the strait. And finally, by 2006, they managed to create a detailed plan which would eventually become the Strait of Messina Bridge as we know it today. And it only took them over 30 years to do it. Better late than never, I guess. Simply put, this mega project will be unlike anything the world has ever seen before. With its longest span reaching a length of 3,300 meters, it will not only break the current record for the longest suspension bridge in the world, it may well shatter it altogether. It'll be an entire 1.3 kilometers longer than the current record holder, which is the Chanakale Bridge in Turkey. But it doesn't end there. Supporting this insanely long bridge will also be an equally massive pair of towers that'll both be 382 meters tall. To put this into perspective, the supporting towers would even be taller than the Empire State Building. And not only that, this height would also make the Strait of Messina Bridge sit comfortably as the tallest bridge of any kind in the entire world, beating the current record holder, the Mio Viaduct in France, by more than 40 meters. What's even crazier is that these achievements alone aren't the only things this bridge will be breaking. Aside from being both the longest suspension bridge and the tallest bridge in the world, it'll even be the tallest structure in the entire country of Italy, breaking the current record by as much as 100 meters. With the current plans, the Strait of Messina Bridge will connect Torre Faro in Sicily with Villa San Giovanni in the Italian mainland. The deck will be 60 meters wide and will be made up of three box girders, which poses an even greater challenge compared to other bridges, which commonly have only one or sometimes two. The outer two segments will be reserved for both directions of vehicular traffic, while the inner one will be for rail travel. 
the bridge will reduce the usual 40 minute ferry ride across the strait to just a four minute drive. Once completed, it's expected to be capable of handling as many as 6,000 vehicles per hour and 200 trains per day. Aside from two short segments on both ends of the bridge up until their anchor points, the entire structure that passes over the Strait of Messina will actually just be one continuous span, limiting the amount of construction work that'll be done on water to a bare minimum. This makes the entire construction process relatively easier and reduces the impact of the project on the surrounding marine life. Building a bridge like this also bypasses one of the major reasons why a tunnel was never built in the first place. The strait is known to be very deep, and the currents both strong and unpredictable. There's even an entire legend that tries to explain this phenomenon. According to the story, two mythical sea monsters named Scylla and Charybdis lived on opposite sides of the strait and terrorized sailors who dared to pass through with Scylla being a six-headed sea monster, while Charybdis was described as an inescapable whirlpool. Ugh. Since the whole bridge won't be touching the water in any way, the issue of depth and strong currents on the strait will completely be avoided. Additionally, with a vertical clearance of 65 meters, even larger cruise ships could easily pass right through with no problem whatsoever. However, like we said earlier, these plans are actually from all the way back in 2006. So why hasn't construction on the bridge begun? almost been two decades after all? Well, the answer is both simple and complicated. Politics. You see, ever since the detailed plans were laid out in 2006, the project has actually been abandoned and revived a couple of times by the Italian parliament. Though there are many reasons to why the bridge has been cancelled multiple times, such as the massive fault line that would run directly beneath it, the primary reason almost always boiled down to a lack of funds, like with many mega projects. The project languished and was passed around the Italian parliament for the next 17 years. It's become such a symbol of failure to Italy that even a saying was coined to illustrate just how long the bridge has been in the works for. Quote, I'll do it when the bridge to Messina is finished, which could mean something like when hell freezes over, something that will likely never happen. However, just recently, in 2023, hell might have actually started to freeze over. After decades of planning, the Strait of Messina Bridge was finally approved by the Italian government in what is referred to by the country's infrastructure minister as a historic day for Italy. As of today, construction is expected to begin in June 2024, with a total price tag of $12.7 billion. But even if the project has already passed in Parliament, there's still one major hurdle to overcome. And it's the actual building of the bridge itself, a bridge the likes of which the world has never seen. The first and most pressing challenge in constructing the Strait of Messina Bridge has something to do with where it'll actually be built. No matter how geographically and logistically advantageous the location of this bridge would be, there's a hidden problem that isn't as obvious when you look at it from the surface. This narrow stretch of water actually lies directly on top of a fault line between the African and Eurasian plates. In 1908, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck the area, which unfortunately took the lives of more than 80,000 people and destroyed much of the coastal area on both sides of the strait. The epicenter of this earthquake is literally right where the bridge is being built. To combat the effects of seismic forces, the bridge is built in such a way that it could even withstand up to a magnitude 7.5 earthquake. One way this is done is through two massive towers, which are both intentionally placed on land, giving them more stability. The towers themselves are also fitted with hourglass-shaped struts that allow the structure to flex more during an earthquake. Finally, the length of the deck itself, being more than three kilometers long, actually helps the entire structure to resist seismic forces more efficiently. The longer the deck is, the more room for it to bend slowly and distribute the stress across its own length. Another major challenge is the gale force winds that are produced by the natural narrowness of the strait itself. The prevailing winds from the south of the strait are basically funneled right up through the narrow gap as they dramatically pick up speed. Wind speeds of as high as 120 kilometers per hour are fairly common around the area, which can be extremely devastating to suspension bridges like this one. Finally, the swinging road and the suspension cables give way and plunge into the water below. In order to work around this challenge, the bridge's deck is actually designed to be as aerodynamic as possible. Remember the three box girders that make up the deck? Well, that actually serves a second purpose. Both of the outer girders are tapered and almost resemble the shape of an airplane's wing when looking at a cross-section. 
This makes it so that the crosswinds will be deflected under the deck and pushed back up through the gaps between each girder. With this design, experts say that the bridge would be able to survive winds as strong as 300 kilometers per hour, more than enough to survive even the strongest hurricanes, let alone the average wind speeds in the area. But no matter how well-engineered the bridge may be, there are some challenges that are way too complex and socially rooted to be solved by brilliant engineering alone. One angle of the Messina Strait Bridge that we haven't talked about yet are the socioeconomic conditions in the two Italian regions it'll be connecting, Sicily and Calabria. In terms of nominal GDP per capita, these two regions are actually the most impoverished when compared to the rest of Italy. This long-standing wealth gap between Italy's northern and southern regions has led to the proliferation of powerful organized crime syndicates that we all know as the Mafia. In fact, Sicily and Calabria specifically are home to the two single most powerful Mafia families in all of Italy, the Sicilia Cosa Nostra and the Calabrian Drangheta, two organizations that are infamous for their infiltration of businesses and projects like this one through extortion and protection racketeering. Given the scale of this mega project, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to believe that these two organizations would be interested in profiteering from it by any means necessary. Vulnerable aspects of the construction, such as transport and supply, could easily be taken over in exchange for protection money, making this already costly project even more expensive. Despite all the risk, according to Matteo Salvini, Italy's Minister for Infrastructure who was instrumental in the recent approval of the project, they will be able to guarantee that the best companies will be working on the project, and that there are measures in place to make sure that the construction will not be derailed by the Mafia. But what do you think about the Messina Strait Bridge? Do you think it'll actually be completed this time? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you want to see more about similar projects, you should watch our video about the most terrifying bridges in the world. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.